Hi, today I'm going to talk about the new material model that's available in LS Dyna. It's called Math Add Inelasticity. It really isn't a material model, more of a framework that you can add upon another material model that's available, an existing material model that's available in LS Dyna. Um, this is something that's available in recent versions of LS Dyna. Today I'm going to talk about version 13, release 13. And uh, in this uh, release, there were three types of flow element you can add to a hyperelastic model, for example, that's already available. And these types include isotropic plasticity, Norton type creep, and linear viscoelasticity. And uh, future releases of LS10 will certainly contain more options here. But this is already pretty useful, and it's interesting to see how this works. So today I'm going to show you how you can use M calibration to calibrate one of these models and explore these models uh, very quickly. So here you can see these parallel structures that are available in the LS Dyna manuals. They call them links, number of links that you want to add. And my first example, I'm going to have two networks, what I call two networks, two things in parallel. In LS Dyna style, this will be one link. But by setting this link to be not fully weighted, it actually becomes two. And I will have Neohookian springs, and I will include the Norton Bailey type creep that's available in LS Dyna. Uh, and here's the equation for this creep model. Uh, here's the creep rate. Um, M is a material parameter. Typically, M is close to zero. And if M is exactly zero, this whole thing goes away, and the equation becomes much easier to, to understand. And P is related to temperature dependence. In my example, I'm going to put that to be zero as well. And A I'm going to be making to be one. So the only parameters that really matter is sigma zero and lowercase n. That gives me the creep equation in this, is my example here. So let's open M calibration and take a look. So here's my M calibration window. I wanted to set this up to make it a little quicker. Um, so here's the material model. If you look in the material model selection here, there is nothing about this mat add in elasticity available yet. We're working on adding support for more material models as we add new releases. But for now, you can incorporate this as a LS Dyna template. And here's the template that I will use today. Um, you can see that these are just LS Dyna commands. So star hyperelastic rubber is a neo-hookian material model with a known Poisson's ratio and the C10 parameter. And since this is an LS Dyna template, I can convert numbers into variables by using this percent sign uh, way here. And you can read more about that on the, if you click on help on format. The new feature is the mat add in elasticity, this command. And here's how we specify that this is one extra link. And it says that this one has a weight factor of 0 0.8. So this flow element, or this particular element is in a parallel to the hyperelastic element, will be 80% of the total stiffness. Then law 5 mod 3 uh, is a way to describe a creep model of type uh, Norton Bailey. And the parameters here are the parameters we saw in the equation uh, on uh, just a minute ago. So by defining it this way, I can say, OK, and then within M calibration, now we have these parameters available for us, just like we have for any material model. We can modify them and see what's going on. To run this, I created a virtual experiment here. Uh, there's one segment where I pull on it in tension to 50% strain, and then I just in the next segment, I unload it back to 0% strain. To make this work, I need to go to the miscellaneous tab, and I need to set the solver to LS Dyna implicit. You could use explicit, but in my example here, it's going to use LS Dyna implicit. And that's really it. Once this is set up, I can just run this one, run once. Um, this is not the case where I can optimize to the parameters to, it's just to explore what's going on uh, in this case. And here's the prediction, uh, the stress strain, true stress, true strain, loading followed by unloading for this Neohookian model in parallel with this type Norton Bailey creep. And you see that this is Somewhat similar to the traditional Bergstrom Boyce model, which has slightly different creep equation or flow equation, but it's a similarity there that's interesting. And we'll see that the slopes of these ones here are related to the W parameter, as one would expect, and the C10 parameter. And that's how you would use it. You can calibrate these parameters to experimental data if you like, and you can then export it and use it in your LS Dyna simulation. Let's take a look at another example. 
where I have four parallel networks. So I have four of these in, in, in parallel, but I have the same Nehokian spring just for simplicity and the same Bailey creep, Norton Bailey creep. So let's open an M calibration file and take a look at this. So here's my Alice Dyna uh, material model in this file here. I have already set it up using these commands as a Alice Dyna template, uh, star mat hyperelastic uh, rubber, mat add in elasticity. We have three extra networks here. And then you just list the properties for each network one after another. And if you like, you can make some of these parameters the same, like I did here, by setting, um, for example, a1, a equal to a on all of these, and all have a value of 1 by default. But you can change that, obviously. Um, this is just to make it uh, simpler. Typically, you don't want to have all of these things independent for each network. Uh, you want to combine them if possible. Um, so here it is. I can just run this once, uh, just like before. This is now using LSDANA implicit again. And by having uh, three flow elements in parallel to the hyperelastic element, we get a little bit more rounder response, as we can see here. And that's for this, it is how you really uh, get um, when you use multiple networks. You get a little bit more continuous or smoother response. Um, so this is another version of this, obviously. You can calibrate to any data that you have. Uh, and, and if you're using LSDANA, you may want to take a look at this kind of framework, because it can be useful for certain polymers. So take a look, and if you have any questions, you can ask them below.